Right, hello everyone. Uh, a couple of knives I'm sharpening tonight. Uh, I'm going through the what I what I describe to my customers as the quick sharp process, which basically means uh, I use my WorkSharp Canonian Elite uh, or Canonian with the blade grinding attachment. Um, two very routine knives here: uh, Russell Hobbs, sort of standard kitchen knife, and this one is a Franco. I think that says is quite worn, um, high grade stainless steel. Is 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 what it mentions here. Normally, uh, if they're not explicit about the steel type, then you know it's it's actually something fairly routine. But I'm going to put a 20 degree edge on, on both of these. Uh, the one thing, just to um, po point out a little bit of an extra treatment for this one, uh, the, the the Russell Hobbs. If I tip the camera down a little bit, it fails this test uh, that I do. I mean, you can see it. You can see it by eye uh, as well. Looking at it, there's a bit of a heel on the edge, but. Um, you can see if I if I try to pass this piece of paper um, underneath the edge, it's, there it's, it, it's not making good contact with the cutting surface. There's only one spot sort of in the middle around the tip that makes sense. There's one spot in the middle uh, where it is making contact and then you've got this void here. So no matter how sharp your knife is, no matter how hard you're pressing down on the cutting surface, you're not actually making contact all the way through. So that's um, if you're slicing peppers or tomatoes or something like that and you end up with all the pieces or cucumber, you end up with all the pieces still attached at the end of the at the end of your job. Uh, that, that's because usually usually because you've got a problem like this. Uh, so I'm going to take you through the, the whole sharpening process. Uh, what I don't have in frame here is the stropping, which I get to at, at the end. I may try and film that, but uh, yeah, stropping is stropping. I just have a hanging strop, uh, slightly out of frame here. Three belts uh, selected for the for the uh, for, for the work sharp. Uh, I'm going to go through the extra coarse, the coarse, and the and the medium uh, for the repair. I'm going to do uh, 25 degrees to to grind off this this heel, and then do the full edge at, at 20. Uh, and for this one, which doesn't have that same uh, issue, well, there's no bolster, so it's 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 you can you can rock the knife to get good contact. Uh, I'm just going to sharpen it at, at at 20 degrees. Um, they're both ex extremely dull, uh, so I, I consider I'm more or less starting from scratch. Uh, the idea is uh, Russell Hobbs at 25 degrees, as I mentioned, I'm going to do all the work to get this to a nice smooth edge. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the, um, the, 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 the paper test, I call it. Uh, not the same paper test as edge slicing, uh, but I'll show, I'll show you that until I've got a good, uh, until I've gotten rid of this heel, and then I will... Um, uh, Sharpen it at twenty, and once this is set to twenty, then I'll then I'll pick up the the other knife, this this Franco, and and proceed with both of them to sharpen as normal. Right. Uh, so, uh, you're if if you're tuning in and you've not seen a work sharp before, um, welcome. Great machines. Uh, I absolutely love them. Um, adjustable edge scale here. So so currently we're set to we're currently set to twenty by loosening. Not here on the on the other side. Then this can be slid up or down, so I'm going to slide that to 25 degrees, tighten it up. Now we are good to go. Pop the belt on, and we'll get going. Should explain here. Um, there, there is a bolster on this this knife, which is why I'm actually not paying much attention to the uh, the, the the angle that I'm that I'm grinding at. You, we will have noticed sometimes by by muscle memory. Uh, I go back to the zero plate when I switch sides, but the, of course that's that's not necessary at all. I'm just sort of freehand sharpening until I get rid of that uh, until I get rid of that heel, uh, which is yeah going going pretty well, but um, a bit more. Here we go.
camera down. How we're doing. It's very soft paper here, so um, sometimes the corner curls up and, and catches. But that is looking much better now. Oh, a little bit, a little bit of contact. Just there. You can see that. See that poking through. Uh, so just just a tiny bit here to to remove, um, and then we're and then we're on to grinding the the cutting edge. Put that back up here, and away we go. Okay, I think we are there. Can be down. Still look. Oh no. Still. No, that was me holding the, uh, not not pushing down properly on the heel. So I so we are. We are there. Yep. Good, uh, so that's all there is to it. Uh, from time to time, you may have noticed I was checking with my thumb just to see the temperature uh, of the steel, but it's, uh, I mean, ab absolutely fine. A, a tiny bit warm, but no issue of, uh, no, no concerns over temper there. Uh, so that's it for getting rid of the heel. You, you, you've got to love um, this device for the, for, for the speed. If you watch my other videos, you will have seen uh, my, I, I do a lot of sharpening on a, uh, Tormac as well, and with that, the I mean, beautiful edge, uh, but time is time is it's much more time intensive. Anyways, shifting to uh, twenty degrees. Now tighten that up, staying on with the coarse belt, uh, and I'm going to work that until I get um oh, sorry extra coarse. Staying with staying with the extra coarse belt uh, until I get a nice burr raised. Um, Okay, uh, sorry about that. I intended to do this all in one uh, one continuous shot so you could see the full process, but um, my wife came to let me know that, that uh, the cat has brought a mouse into the into the kitchen. So I had to go deal with that. Um, now that's all sorted and back at it. Uh, so we've done that. We've done the repair. I'm going to proceed now with sharpening both of these 20 degrees per side. Um, I do the, the sharpening, flipping the edge, uh, fl flipping the knife over after each pass uh, and I, I do that to ensure that I have even grinding and end up with an apex in the middle. I know that uh, plenty of others including WorkSharp advise sharpen continuously on one side until you raise a burr, flip it over, raise a burr uh, and then move through your belt progression. Um, both work, uh, both will give you an extremely sharp edge. Uh, partly I just I, I like that certainty of knowing I'm grinding evenly on both sides. Uh, and there's also just a certain amount of muscle memory. That's the way I've always done it. Uh, you've seen even uh, when I was doing the repair, I kept going back to the, to the zero plate because that's just how I'm how I'm hardwired. But anyway, uh, let's let's get to it.
So, uh, still going. Still haven't still haven't raised a burr here actually. But um, thing is, uh, this this knife probably in its previous life had a twenty five or maybe even a thirty degree angle. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure. So this is the first time I've seen this knife. Uh, and because it was so rounded, I wasn't able to use the goniometer to get an accurate to get an accurate reading. So I'm converting it to a 20. The bevel size uh, is is growing as as you can see. So that's an indication that we're uh, we are going thinner than it than it had before. Uh, I'm going to give that one a rest uh, for now. I'm, I'm still not there. I still don't have a burr all the way along. But I'm going to leave that one uh, and and switch over switch over to the uh, Franco. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, that's that one done already. Nice burr uh, all the way along. Um, I always do one more full pass on each side after I think I'm okay with the burr. Uh, just just to be sure, just to make, just to you know uh, check if there, if there is a small gap that I missed or I can't feel, etc. So uh, once I can feel feel the burr all the way along full edge, I'll do one more pass uh, in on on both sides. Okay, back to the Russell Hobbs to get that get that burr. I think I think we're close. In fact. Um, just for peace of mind uh, just just put a little bit of a mark on the bit on the bevel on both sides and make sure that it's if if I'm cleaning that completely off at least next to the next to the edge uh, I know that I'm I'm very close so here we go Right, no more sharpie, um, and at least at least not next to the bevel. You can see there's a little bit at the at, at the top there where I just went a little bit too wide with the pen marks. Um, <laughs> funny enough, I can actually start to feel a um, a, a, a burr forming. So it actually just stopped uh, one or two passes short. So anyway, a couple more a couple more each side, and it should be there. And then we'll move through to the lower belts, lower grits, higher grit, higher grit. <laughs> Okay, so got nice burr on uh, on both sides. So now uh, that's that's the, that's the grunt work done. Now it's just a matter of moving through the uh, belt progression. I'm going to go coarse and medium, uh, three passes a side per knife. Um, uh, then strop and edge test, and we'll see um, we'll, we'll we'll see where we are. So here we go. I'm going to do uh, yeah three per side then then swap belts. Here we go.
Okay. Medium belt, um, three per side, maybe even two. I'll see how, see how it feels. So at, at this point, we're just tidying up uh, the the apex that we've that we've gave it, uh, produced. Here we go. Okay, and that's that. Uh, switch over to the hanging strap now, and and then we'll do a, a sharpness test. Uh, I won't be able to move the camera over to the hanging strap, uh, so I'm going to stop here, uh, and we'll resume in a second. Uh, okay, hanging strap here, made from uh, kangaroo tail leather. I bought this from Knife Grinders, uh, from Vadim Krychuk of Knife Grinders. Unfortunately, he passed away. Uh, not, not that long ago, so these are no longer available, but so I don't know if it's useful to share or not how amazing I think these are, but um, tremendous finishing tool uh, for, for sharpening. Uh, we use it on everything that I do, whether it's Tormek or WorkSharp. Uh, I'm going to go do 20, 20 passes, 10, 10 per side, so up on one side and then down on the other. That's, that's so one, two, three, four, etc., up to 20. Uh, a bit distracted here. I'm not, not usually filming myself with, with hanging strap, but um, let's move over to sharpness testing now. Uh, okay, so here we are with the, with the best tester. Set up. I'll do the Franco first. Oh, it's not lined up here. Um, so I'm not adjusted. Uh, not, I've just come straight over from the hanging strap. As I mentioned, it's not possible to move the camera directly, um, but uh, so here we go. Looking for nice slow progression of the numbers. I think it's going to be well. Actually, if we if you bear with me for a second, we can change this setup a little bit so that you can watch the numbers, and meanwhile I can do the sharpness testing. So looking for a nice, uh, nice slow progression of the numbers. And keep in mind, this is a this is a rough and ready belt sharpening. So two hundred four, yeah, not bad. And the Russell Hobbs do the same. Much different expectation as I was with my Tormac and doing going through what I call my super sharp process, much more involved. Uh, but here we're just trying to get a good, sharp, workable edge. And my experience, 200 is around the edge of a, a brand new box cutter. Okay, that one, not as expected. I'm going to take this back to the straw for a second. something okay so again yeah 174 there we go um, so good to go and 
as a final check if this if this shows up. Uh, paper slice, nice and smooth. And next one, yes, very good. So uh, I'm satisfied. Customer will be too, very nicely sharpened, uh, very serviceable edge in a very quick time. Um, that's my start to finish protocol for the WorkSharp. Um, hope you enjoyed, see you again.